Hello everyone. My name is Joe Faruqi, an improvement leader at NUH, and I'm here today to give you an introduction to process mapping, one of the key tools we use in our quality improvement at NUH. First of all, there are many tools that we use to help improve quality, some of which you may be familiar with, other ones less so. We may use things such as a fishbone diagram, also run charts, you may have used the NHS sustainability model in the past, all of which, however, are part of our standard set of tools in order to make quality improvement easier to do across our 17,000 staff. They're all part of a training programme called Quality Service Improvement and Redesign, QSA for short. And if you look closely on here, you will notice that one of the modules that we cover within QSA specifically relates to one of the important tools, the one I wish to talk about today, which is process mapping. So when we come to talk about process mapping, really what I want to get across today is answering really three questions. Question number one, what is process mapping? Question number two, well, once you know what it is, why would you want to do it? And question number three, how can you actually do it? So let's start with what is a process? A process is anything really that you do. So an example you can see here, if you take a big rock, you might have a process of sculpting in order to turn it into a building block. In terms of the hospital, the input wouldn't be a big rock, it'd be more likely to be one of our patients, it may just be information, or may be blood samples. When we come to mapping it, when we describe process mapping, it's really a visual way to try and describe what that process looks like. So you use the analogy of trying to find your way somewhere, you could always have someone just give you directions. If you're anything like me, if it was a little way off, by the time they were several sentences in, I'd be quite lost. And I'd also wouldn't be able to tell anyone else exactly what those directions were. So what we do in reality is we use maps. That are a visual representation of how to find your way from A to B. When you have a good map that's been compiled by people that know the area and may even give you special extra information such as turn left at the shell garage, it means that you're no longer clueless and you have a clear idea about how to do something. It also means I can take that map and show it to other people and take it on the journey with me and see it actually accurate. Does it reflect exactly how I do get there? So we started to answer actually the second question here about why map. Well, it allows us to see reality. You can see it laid out in front of you. It also helps us understand problems. We can literally see where they happen and allows us to see from another's point of view. Healthcare is complex and as such is delivered by multiple different teams doing multiple different tasks. To be able to understand things from another point of view is fundamental if you want to try to improve it. And that leads on to our next point about being focused on improvement. This perhaps is more about how you do mapping, but really there needs to be a focus on improvement, not blame. Blame shuts down thinking and doesn't really resolve. Sometimes all it does is just give us a answer that can feel seductive. It allows us, if we do mapping correctly, to be open, transparent and honest and therefore actually make things better. So in terms of how you can do it, well, there's quite a few ways. You could do it face to face in the way that I'm more used to doing it, using post-its and brown paper. Or nowadays you can do it virtually using standard tools that we know of, such as Excel, or sometimes even online tools such as Miro. And there are a whole host of other tools that can help us do things virtually. In reality, sometimes what we end up doing now is a bit of a mix of both. 
So let's show you a little bit about what a map actually looks like. And for this, I'm going to use my own example of getting up in the morning. So the first thing that happens generally is my alarm rings. And so I'd capture that as an actual thing that happens. The next thing, as you can see on here, represented by a diamond, I've got a decision to make. Do I press snooze or don't I? So because it's a decision, it gives us two possible outcomes. Yes, in which case I will wait now till the alarm rings again, or no, carry on with my morning. So as we carry on through those, we can see the next few steps of my morning routine. What we also importantly want to do is either capture any issues we have with here, any problems we might see, but also any potential ideas to improve things. So an example here might be that sometimes my toothbrush isn't always charged. So in the morning, it's a bit frustrating when you come to brush your teeth. So having explained really a bit about mapping and how you can do it, what would you do now? Well, where you would like to get to is being able to create a map like this that does describe my whole morning routine from beginning to end. In order to do that, you can always access some extra resources which are available off the front page of the intranet. As you can see, under our team's improvement and transformation team little icon, there are CUSA resources and CUSA tools. Some of these will just signpost you towards extra training you can have such as the virtual training highlighted here, which are one hour webinars, which includes a one hour webinar on process mapping, all of which can be booked by ESR and instructions are on our internet site. Equally, we can also signpost you on there to further tools. So as we said, this is a national tool set we're describing here, and you can be taken directly to this national tool set, and this is the web page for that. Lastly, if you need to get in touch with our team, you can either access us via Twitter or also by email. Thank you.